amazing in general. She's, I remember watching her and one of the reasons I wanted to get braids as a young girl, because her <laughs> roles used to always uh, rock braids. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get into her bio and then we're going to get into just a, an intimate, real conversation. How many actors are actually in the audience <laughs> today? Okay. Okay. How many directors are in the audience? Okay. <laughs> Come on, get some confidence. I did not believe it. Woo, I direct. Woo, I love it. I'm good at it. Writers? Yeah. Okay. And just general fans of Regina. Yeah. Um, all right, so thanks to roles in a number of prominent films, Regina King's distinguished talents have not gone unnoticed by Hollywood. She's been seen in recurring roles on CBS's hit show, The Big Bang Theory, Showtime's critically acclaimed series, Shameless, FX is Thriller the Strain. It's not on the bio, but of course, American Crime, for which she's garnered two Emmy Awards for her outstanding supporting actress in a limited series or movie, as well as her first Golden Globe nomination. Um, she's currently in production on her latest television series uh, as a starring vehicle for Netflix's racial crime drama, Seven Seconds, um, from Fox 21, and The Killing Creator. Oh, I love The Killing. Did y'all see The Killing? <laughs> so you know this is gonna be hot fire. Um, this is all. We're going to get into it. It's long. Y'all were on the SIP website. You know where her bio is. You know who she is. So I'm going to bring her out. Regina King, come join us on stage for a SIP. Just in case you get a little Just hot in case. Up here. How am I? I don't. How, how you turn this on? Oh, so easy. Up top. Does yours work? Okay. Mine's not working. I'm gonna just stay hot. It's fine. So first order. I want to see how this. <laughs> Is this a parting gift? Of course. Okay. You can have it. Oh wow. You can have ten fans. Wow. Okay. So our first order of business, before we get down to it, you know we got to take a shot. A shot. Um, but that's not a sip. No, but the sip it's, comes later. OK. They bring okay. in, after we take a shot, and then okay. you sip. Then you sip throughout. We pop off first. We pop off. We pop off. So what, is she, there anything you want to tell us to? Um, to all this beauty up in here. That's a good, that's a good. Cheers. Cheers. Woo. Mm. Okay. That's for the grown folks. I love it. Um, so now you ready? You ready to spill your guts? Sure. So again, I mentioned I'm really excited that you're. So on your bio says that you were actually born in Cincinnati. Uh, no. Okay. So that's you were so, born in LA. Um, yeah. And so look, look, what I love is the fact that you said born and bred because I always say, but not raised. Yes. They raise pigs. They breed. Horses and stallions. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so born and bred. So born and bred. You actually grew up in my neighborhood, Windsor Hills View Park. Okay. So is, let's I just wait. Talk about that. I learned this about 39 seconds ago. <laughs> I don't know. I just assumed Inglewood. No, because I, I do a lot of stuff. In yeah, because I watch it. My grandparents lived here. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Girl. Yeah, because I watch that show. <laughs> But you grew up here. I, you, I remember listening. There's a Fresh Air interview with you that I love. First of all, I love Terry Gross. That and means, I felt like oh, she really just dug in. But doesn't she dig into oh my, every, she, in, in such so a great sincere, way? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was talking about, you know, just how you, I mean, you were talking about just your LA experience. Like you were acting right, at a young right, age. Right. You were in 227. And you went to high school at Westchester out here. And Common City. You wanted to have a real, like, 
um, a childhood at some point. You right. and your parents had a discussion. This is the sip this portion. This is the sip part. Okay. Yes, oh. now you can for real sip. Let me just sip right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now it's official. So you wanted to have a real childhood. Can you talk about um, what you learned about yourself just deciding to go from this big show to, to being like, I want to take a break and I want to decide whether or not I want to continue to pursue acting. Right. The, the, you're talking about between 227 and the, when the movies were starting. Yes. Um, gosh. You know, I think one of the things that was unique about me is that I had the mother that I had and she was not for the whole performing arts school, school for kids that work bullshit. Mm. She wasn't down for that. Mm -hmm. So when NBC was like, oh no, you should put her in this school, she was like, no, she's gonna be a product of LA Unified. Yes. <laughs> and at that time I was kind of like, dang mom, do you know I get to go to the school with the elite? And you're like, no, she's like, oh, yeah, no. But it was the best thing that, that could have ever happened to me because I ran track still in school. I got to do regular, I went to. You rode the school bus? Ah, uh, for a little bit. <laughs> okay. I, I rode the school bus in my ninth grade year. Okay. And I mean, literally me straight, mm -hmm. straight up school mm -hmm. bus. And, um, I, and I don't know about you because you're a little bit younger than me, but for me, that, that there was a time like I'm where I live, you know, Windsor Hills. Yeah, we were supposed to go to Crenshaw. Crenshaw and Slauson. Right. That was my bus yes. Stop. So, but but you could make the, the decision to be bus to another school. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to explore. It wasn't like not wanting my blackness right, or right, anything right, like right. that. It's just I wanted to explore. Right. So I chose to be bus to Westchester High. So um, that having that whole, ex and, and I'm saying chose to be bus to Westchester High, it actually started before that because I started busing in fifth grade. Mm. I used to go to 54th Street School and um, I was bused to Castle Heights, which was like culture shock. It was like white kids like were at school with no shoes on. Uh -uh. <laughs> and I just really <laughs> didn't understand that. Like, that's okay? Why? Just you like that? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't want to go here. Good choice. So my mom switched me to another school, Paseo Del Rey. So all of my schools from that moment on always were at the beach. Okay. And I think, honestly, for me, the beach opens you up. You know what I mean? Like, we had gone to the beach before I started going to school by the beach. But for that to be your regular thing, when I ditched school, we went to the ocean. Mm. And we sat on the ocean and wrote and talked and I built skateboards on the beach. You know, I did some really white shit, you know? But like, <laughs> were you tapping into like your artistic roots at I that think time so, too? I think so, but didn't know that I was. You know, I was exp I, not really just so much tapping into my, my artistic roots because I think just as um, a, per, a, a black person, we have been so much of what the fabric of America is that, you know, our artistry is so deep mm -hmm. that, that we're always, um, it's always with us, whether or not we're in tune with it, you know, it depends on what the heck is going on with you. But I feel like it expanded things mm. because most of my life was black. You know, and then um, choosing to bus and go to a school by the beach, I was able to be at a school where I d had never seen as many, not, not seen, never um, had frequent conversations and dialogue with as many white people as I did once I started being bus to the beach. And, um, you know, going over, you know, that was my first taste of, you know, when like you see in, on, on comedians do it in their stand-ups, but that shit is true, white kids cursing and saying shit in front the of parents, their parents. I know. And I had never seen that till probably like the eighth grade. You know, it was like, oh! <laughs> just, just waiting for the consequences that never happened? Yeah, like, you know, it's like you like blinking. Oh, yes, yes. 
So at that point, <laughs> <laughs> so eighth grade, you're surrounded by, by white kids. Yeah. You're, you know. It, it was a good mix, because it was white kids, it was Latin kids, you know, Westchester was taking, taking us all in. Right. It was immigrants. But you're still, are you acting at, you're acting at that point. I, I was, I was. I was doing extra work when I was um, in elementary school and then junior high school, commercials and extra work. And then like 227 happened in like my ninth grade year uh, in high school. And yeah. so then the decision after 227 was, am I going to continue? Am I going to continue? And yes. what made you decide, I am going to continue this? I'm embarrassed to say, but I'm not. Um, so I was going to USC, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't the jam for me. And you know, that? I just really realized that I love to learn, but the classroom situation just is not for me. I remember I was in this one class, it was a lecture class, and at that time, lecture hall <laughs> classes were like 200 kids, where now it's like 500 mm -hmm. kids. But it was like 200 kids, and I fell asleep. And the teacher was like, you, 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 and this is me, you, stay after. And I'm like wondering, you know, like, what? The celebrity in me is like, oh, he recognizes me. <laughs> so, <laughs> So we stay after, and basically we were all the ones that fell asleep in the class. Oh, damn. <laughs> and he was like, you know, don't fall asleep in my class. And I was like, excuse me, I'm not here on scholarship. And he was like, okay. And I said, if I want to bring a pillow <laughs> and fuck off my money, I, it's my prerogative. I got to deal with that between me and whoever. I got to deal with that, with, but not you. And I'm like, you're taking up my time, and I got to go to work. Because I had to go to two. I was still shooting 227. Mm -hmm. So um, it was literally that moment that made me go, I, you know what? I just feel like I learn more when I'm in the experience opposed to the classroom experience. Not that I'm saying the classroom experience is not. It just wasn't for yeah, you. Yeah, it just wasn't for me. And uh, so. I'm a college dropout. <laughs> and it worked out. I remember recently. It did work out. You guys, don't, don't go to college. Tim, <laughs> Tim Story and I have gone, I don't know if you guys know who Tim Story is. He's a d famous director. Um, we went to elementary school, junior high school, high school, and college together. Wow. Yes. I dropped out of college, as we've stated, as I've stated. But the thing that's so funny is they were giving Tim like some honorary thing or whatever. So I guess someone must have done the research and saw that I went to USC as well. And I was like, well, I don't think I'm qualified because I'm a dropout. And Tim has a twin sister. And Tammy went to USC as well. And she was like, no, you know, you went to USC. I was like, are you sure, Tammy? She was like, no, I'm telling you. Then like three days later, she was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out, like you said. It and worked out. My it favorite thing out. about you, I mean, I have so many favorite things, but your body of work, especially your early body of work, is is super, super LA. You know, you it have super, yeah. Um, you have Friday, you have Poetic Justice, Boys in the you have hood, Boys in the Hood. Higher Learning, which was at USC. Higher Learning, for sure. Yeah, it was filmed at USC, but I couldn't figure out, was it supposed to be based in LA? Yes. It was yes, supposed to be yes, but it was yes, like it Columbus was. University. It was some fake name. I don't know. But I don't remember. You're taking me back to too far. I could be lying. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was We're just going to claim it. We're yeah. going to claim it. Yeah. But how do you feel like, one, how do you feel like LA has informed how you act and, you know, how you take on particular roles? And two, do you see any, any difference in the LA that you were presenting now? I mean, presenting then right. and the LA that's kind of presented now in television and movies. Hmm. I don't feel like, L I think, you know, especially with Boys in the Hood and that slice of time, that was um, very specific and very singular. I think Boys in the Hood, 
uh, popped off, you know, the Menace to Societies and, and, and mm -hmm. other movies in uh, South Central, you know, in, in shows and movies that um, were, felt like that it, it was okay to tell that story and, and elaborate on that story. So, um, yes, I do think it's different, but I think it's different in the whole world. I mean, no matter where it was that you were, that you grew up, anywhere in the world, if you talk about it then and you talk about it now, sure, it's, it's changed. Um, but do I feel like it's made me, for lack of a better way to say it, a better celebrity? Absolutely. Because mm. I feel like, and I think that you can relate to this too, there's a majority of people in our business aren't from LA, this but they're true. all here. This is true. They're all here and they all got about five or 10 cents to share about LA. They do. <laughs> but they really don't know it They have as no idea. Deep. They have no idea. I'm trying Just to tell kidding. you. Guys, if you're not from LA, yeah. You're great. Yeah. But you're great. But stop talking shit about yeah. it. Yeah. It's funny, my son had put up a post one time um, a while ago that, that he, he reacted to someone else's thing talking about the traffic in LA. And he was like, stay your ass in Delaware. <laughs> you're raising And he was like, Mom, I got 500 retweets. The funny part about it is, I've never got that many reasons. <laughs> so, but you he tweets check much people. more. That's it. Yeah. So, you've been active for 30 years, basically, right? Like, over 30 years, you've been working consistently. Sure. You have, yeah. right? And you. Let's just keep reminding the folks. I mean, it's a long time. You've been working consistently. I started when I was one. <laughs> Those pamper commercials were everything. <laughs> you guys probably don't even recognize me. <laughs> but it's a feat, like you've worked consistently yeah. and you have attributed that to like, oh, the universe blesses you, but <laughs> what is it? She's like, bitch, stop yeah, with that like, shit. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think it is? Like for real, what do you um, think? Besides talent, why do why are you so hireable? What I makes you I so think hireable? it's a combination of a lot of things. You know, I'm I'm one of those people. My toenail broke <laughs> before I came here, so <laughs> this is a cute one. Um, I think it's a com <laughs> a combination of. Why did I see that and it just distracted everything? Have some more. Because she, wa she wants this to be a watch what happens live. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, I am a result of so many things. You know, I do, you know, like, yes, I do um, attribute a lot of it to the spiritual and the universe and all of that. But <clears throat> also a lot of it just backing up to the story when I was talking about my mom refusing for me to go in a school that would have probably made me socially retarded, mm. you know? Um, so I think that that has a lot to do with it. I think it has a lot to do with the first school she put me in was totally granola. You know, like, you know, let there be peace on earth. <laughs> Like that was a, like hold our hands and we sing this and the, like we don't do we didn't do the ple pledge of allegiance we sang let there be peace on earth okay which was <laughs> you can write about it you okay, can write about I it might. go ahead I might um, no the, the, it, it, if I l let me elaborate a little more on those of the outside of this Were they it like might be some no oh. not at all not at all but it was so loving that by the time I got to 54th Street School, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she want to fight me? <laughs> I just have on ditto. <laughs> but it was, you know, a bit of a culture shock. Right. It really was because that school was so much on, you know, um, focusing on, um, Focusing on the differences, but recognizing that the differences are not differences. Right. You know, they're, they're actually what make you better. So to go through my first four years of school being that, 
And then to go to the hood and Kimberly Munson wanted to beat my ass. And I, I remember her first and last name. Anybody know Kimberly Munson, tell her I'm sorry, I don't know what I did. All I had was strawberries on my ditto. That's all. Can y'all look up Kimberly Munson on Facebook? <laughs> You're like, Regina called you out. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like there, there, there are so many things that, I mean, and I think that's the same for anybody in this audience. There are so many different instances throughout time that, you know, inform who you are at this very moment. You know, who I am at this very moment is not the same Regina that I was 10 years ago, five years ago even. Like, I am still on my journey of being more tactful, mm. you know. Um, I recognize the importance of it more as I've matured. Tactful to who, though? Um, everyone, everyone, because I'm, I'm, I've always kind of been like the person that, like, I kind of say what I feel and I just say it, and when people well, might say people? it's rude, I feel like it's saving time. Mm. <laughs> but but always, but not always is that. But do you feel like that's why people are drawn to you because they know that it's not going to be could be could, yeah you know? could be it, 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 it has served me well with acting, but maybe not so much in relationships. Oh, you know. Um, yeah. I want to segue into that, but yeah, <laughs> oh. but I'm not. I'm not a guy too. But you, you mentioned something that, just in terms of like your, you, a lot of people use real to describe you, both right. both both off screen, uh, in terms of your personality and just you know how you talk. Your, um, it's just you are who you are, and that's one of the best things about you as well. But on screen as well, you bring such like a, a depth and realness to your characters. And like all of your characters, I guess as a job, your job as an actress is to make right. your characters feel real. But what do you tap into specifically to do that? Um, <clears throat> I feel like I tap into early things. Like I feel like there were certain um, actresses and actors at a very young age that made me go, the way they're making me feel right now, that's fucking dope. Like who? Sally Field. Mm. She's a bad uh, bitch. Oh my God. She you is. know, I'm, you know, Meryl Streep is obvious, but fuck it. I mean, it's fucking Meryl Streep. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really feel like if she like tried to like play somebody black, you just might go. <laughs> no? Yo, <laughs> we might be on to something. She would make us believe. She make would like us believe. She would legitimize Rachel Dolezal. Like, Seriously. Well, I guess the bitch was right. Yeah. She's black. Yeah. Mel Street as Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> I would watch that Lifetime movie. I would. <laughs> Just to see Meryl Streep and some individuals like swinging them, like I'm the NAACP chair. <laughs> I would love that. Wow. But you get my point. I yeah. Did. Cause, cause I you, you got it immediately because that is the thing that inspired me early on. Just, just watching people. I, for Sally Field, I had seen her as Norma Ray and as Sybil. And it was kind of mind, that, that was probably my first example that an actor could play a lot of different characters. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, they, they, when you're younger, you see an actor as this, you know, it, it, Erica Kane is Erica Kane. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? You see them as, but Sally Field was my first um, mem memory of an actor that I was like, as an actor, you could be anything. Yeah. You could be anything you want. And I always wanted to be so many things. Well, I mean, that shows. Because, I mean, even 
like, again, your earlier work, I love, but did you ever feel like you were pigeonholed to a degree? Because a lot of actors, a lot of black actors specifically, yeah. they are only allowed to a degree, and I say allowed loosely because you know, whatever. But yeah. to just work in the world of sure. black film, and you've crossed over. And when, when do you feel I, like you I, did I, that? Well, um, a few times, a few times. And and so when you talk about the universe and all of that, I feel like the faith that my because we, okay, hold on to your horses. Ooh. I grew up with, um, in a religion, a philosophy called science of mind. Not to be confused with Scientology. Scientology. It's religious science. So basically, it is um, encompassing all religions, all philosophies, all faith, finding the beauty, the prayers, the philosophy within all religions, all philosophies that align the mind, the body, and the spirit. So this is what I grew up knowing. So have anybody out here heard of agape? Yeah, I was gonna ask okay. about Okay, so that's mm -hmm. what agape is. Mm -hmm. Michael Beckwith and my mother became practitioners together. Wow. So this is what I grew up, this was my life. So when the whole secret thing came up, I was like, mom, what's the secret? And she was like, I just need you to read the first two paragraphs. And I read, I was like, that's religious science. Mm. And she was like, yeah, you know, pretty much. So having that as my base, as my foundation, there was never really a place of, um, when, when I w got into places where I was, if, if I continue to con be hood, I could keep get, getting roles that way. But, I, you know, the discovery was, oh, well, you know, I don't want to do that. But I never even for a second thought felt like if I turned down that the next offer that came and did come, to play someone in the hood that I would not work because mm. of my, mm. my base. So with that being my base, it allowed me to have the freedom to say, well, it's time to move on from there. It's time to, just because I've always known that this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm, my artistry is acting, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe some people may not think of acting as art, but I've known it only as art. At first it was a hobby, but I still looked at it as art. Mm -hmm. So once, you know, college came around, I was like, yeah, ready to make the hobby a career. Mm. But it was always still from a place of artistry. So when those times came with, from, you know, Boys in the Hood, Friday, uh, what's the other one? Higher Learning, mm -hmm. Poetic Justice, big one, yeah, Poetic <laughs> Justice. Um, that after those, and, and I started getting a whole bunch of offers to continue that, I was like, mm-mm. I've done that already. I'm, I'm done that, I'm good. So then I went into White World. You know, oh, and then, you know, wife. Jerry, Jerry Maguire, Maguire yeah. Enemy of the State, uh -huh. you know. So, so then, so Jerry Maguire was that pivotal, the, the question that you asked me, that was a pivotal moment. Boys in the Hood was a pivotal, to the question that you asked me, a pivotal moment from two to seven to the movies. Jerry Maguire was a pivotal moment from hood to grown woman. But was that in your mind? Like, no, did you know? You were just no, doing it no, because I did, you were it was, it was, it was, I'm, I'm living it as it's happening, you know? Like, the hood shit was like, I did three of them. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and then, you know, I, well, sometimes when I look on the social media, and people are like, you know, uh, what has she done or this person has done that? I'm like, y'all motherfuckers need to open up a newspaper or something. <laughs> Shut up now. Cause a chick ain't never not been doing shit. Hello, hey that. And I'm grateful for that. I'm totally grateful for that. But I know I gotta, I own that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna own that. I should own that. I went through a time where I was like, feeling like if I would, uh, own the things that I've done, you know, feel like, oh, I'm bragging, whatever. My mother was like, no, you better own that. It's My mother was class. like, you did that, and you should own that. 
Have you ever had a moment, just because you've worked so much and you've taken on so many roles and so many different people over time, have, has there ever been a moment where you've been over it? Have you ever had to convince yourself, again, why you love doing what you do? Nope, and I always say the moment that I do, that, that's when I need to pull out. I gotta tell you, directing uh, definitely um, refueled a lot of the things passion. on the acting mm. front. I wanna ask you more yeah. about that, because I mean, I know you, first of all, you got the idea to direct, I mean, on the Monique show? Uh, I got the idea to be vocal about it. Okay. On the Monique. Uh, you do your history. I read a lot of your interviews. I fucks with you. Thank you. <laughs> I fucks with you too. Word. So the idea came it before. It did, it did. It came, and was it, it coming from a place of like, I want to do something new, I feel restless? It, yeah, well, um, it, it, it kind of came from a place of um, probably maybe about maybe six years or so before the Monique show, I kind of had a little discovery like, you know, like I think I, I would like to direct. I would like to see what this is like. And Were I you think, watching somebody in particular? Like Watching people that. on set, watching directors on projects that I was working on. And I think initially it came from the control thing. I'm mm. a bit of a control freak. You're Capricorn. Yep. I'm a Capricorn. Too. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, because I'll be sending you happy birthday messages and you send them to me too. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Which is really, it's goofy, but it was so special. No, are you kidding you know, me? You know when you discover someone that you admire? I was like, she's a fucking Capricorn. <laughs> Regina, stop right now. Thank you. No, that's like literally what I did when I found out you were Capricorn. I was like, of course. That's why she's so fucking dope. All right, God. Regina, it's about you. She all smart and okay. everything. <laughs> Writing and shit. Oh, it did, word. Please continue. Yeah, okay. <laughs> where was I? I don't remember. But, you You're know. You were control, but you were trying to figure out, like, where, when you first started. Yeah, to yeah, do yeah, it. yeah. And um, so, the, um, on, 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 on Monique, Jaheem was on there, and he was like, will you be in my video? And I was like, no, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do videos. Thank don't you. Do music, don't do music videos? But we exchange numbers. Okay. And then I thought about it and I was like, you know what, for shits and giggles, ask him about directing it. So I sent him an, uh, a text and I was like, text or email, I can't remember, was that sidekick time? <laughs> I can't Zahir, remember. Probably. Yeah. Sidekick yeah. time, sidekick yeah. Time. So I, I, I kicked him a, a, a message and I was like, um, I, I will be in your video if I can direct it. And he was like, have you ever wrote a treatment for a video before? And I was like, sure. <laughs> 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 and he was like, awesome, you know, send a treatment. And I was like, <laughs> send me the music. And he was like, it's on something. And so I, I had to look it up. And I, that, you know, universe, mm -hmm. I immediately had an idea. So um, I wrote the idea out. And then I had a friend that's a writer, like, kind of clean it up or whatever, and sent it off to the um, record label. And so I was able to direct. So was that the video. first piece that, that you directed? That was the first piece. Okay. Yes. Because I did a short after that and another video after that, Kelly Price's video after that. Which Kelly Price video? Um, Kelly Price and um, oh my boy, I love him to death. Why am I having a brain fart? Uh, Pretty Brown Eyes. What's the group? Oh, Make Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stokely. Stokely. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, so then post that, was that 
you like, oh yeah, I did that. I was that. like, I, I did. I do so that. when I did it, so when I was in the video, you know, I'm I'm be, I'm I'm the girlfriend in the video, I guess, you know. So I had on my heels and my shorts. So I'm around doing my thing, and I'm doing it in my heels and shorts, feeling real sexy, by the yes. way. Yes. And was able to be give, make sure the men were respectful in what I had on and listening to what I had to say. And so I would have to say, because that was my first experience and my first experience went so great and I was in such a place of commanding the respect and, 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 and making sure that I would not um, let myself fall prey to any of the things that I heard from other female directors. Mm. And it was in, in my Tim's story, good friend, he was like, either you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. And I loved it. Oh my God, I loved it. And I just couldn't wait for the next time. So then the next time I did a short for- Is that um, what she used to get into for, the ABC training I actually, program? Actually, you know what, then to get into the, believe it or not, to get into the ABC training program, I used a Jaheim video. Oh, wow. So I, I'm, Paris Barkley is, a, he's the president of the DGA. And he is, has been such a, um, an amazing mentor for me. He's directed everything from high school, musical, to Sons of Anarchy, to, I mean, he's just, as directors go, he is the man. And he's a, a black, gay director, male director. And um, someone said, Regina, just go talk to Paris. So I showed Paris my short, and I showed him the Jaheem video, and he watched the Jaheem video with n the volume off. And he watched it and he said, okay, I know the story that you're telling and I don't even have to hear the music. This is what you submit. So I submitted that to the ABC program. So you submitted to the ABC program with the specific intention of like, I wanna work with, with Shonda no, Land with the, specifically, boom, right? Boom, exactly. And I didn't really wanna work on ABC. Yeah. I wanted to work with Shonda. So why not, given just who you are, why don't you hit up Shonda and be like, hey girl, trying to direct. Hearing that out loud, I see why you didn't do right. that. Right, yeah. But, <laughs> but I love that, that you decided to go through the training program you know, and then. Um, um, when I made the decision to go through the training program, it was uh, Paris who also had given me the, the push to do it. He said that if you go through this program, people are gonna see that you were willing to go outside of your comfort zone to do things that regular people, whatever the fuck that means, does, do, and um, to um, put yourself in a place that's open to being judged. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, people are gonna take you seriously and understand that it's not a vanity thing. You're not doing it because you want Regina King's name to be on something. You're doing it because when I sat down with him, he asked me all these questions and I answered them. And he said, you really wanna tell stories. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a writer like you, but I do have, I, I, I have a bit of writing in me. Mm -hmm. I just don't have the discipline that you have to to, to build it to a, a, a complete form. But I can, um, can execute the I can vision. execute the vision and I can I can add to the mm -hmm. vision and I can the, the the beauty of working with as an actor, you get to work with your other actors, the director, the wardrobe stylist, and I guess maybe the DP. But as a director, you work with everybody. everybody. And that's what was attractive to me. So whatever answers I had to his questions led him to believe that you're not doing this for vanity because you just want Regina King. You want to expand your creativity. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to do more. And um, he said, if you do this program or one of these, he, he, it wasn't just ABC program. He sent me ABC, NBC, and Fox. Okay. And I wanted to work with Shonda. So I only applied to the ABC program. I didn't apply to the other ones. So once you went through the program, first of all, I've always wondered just in terms of these, these trainee programs, how efficient they are. Obviously you were, you, they put you in a group of 
many writer directors from all different backgrounds. So for you specifically, given that you had the experience in acting and that you had the experience on set already, how much did it really help you? Well, they, they, they put you in the, like, so when you apply, let's just say it's probably like, you know, let's just say 800 people. And of those 800, the majority of them are people that are already, already within in, the uh, industry, okay. just not working in the industry within that capacity. Got it. So they're narrowing it down based on content that you submitted and, and probably, you know, who you are and, and, and what you've said in your statement. Because okay. you have to send a... Like a personal statement. It was like applying to college yeah. a little bit lightweight. I was like, really? <laughs> I can't just say Regina King. <laughs> No, I gotta, oh, I gotta write more, forget it. But the, <laughs> the beautiful thing about that was, is my son got to watch me as I was doing all of that. So he got to see like, you know, you, you should be constantly reinventing or, yes. or learning or, 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 or putting yourself in, uh, out, outside of your comfort zone. Comfort zone. I mean, my favorite quote is, comfort zones are where dreams go to die. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly, I think, putting myself in those spaces. And I think that answers the question as to why I have been able to continue for 30 plus years, because yeah. I have a desire to challenge myself. Well, you've, you've also, also gained a new perspective just as an actress, you know, being directing and directing, being a director and directing actors, you know, I'd imagine that you're, you have a whole new lens on the process. Yes. And given that, have you worked with actors and been like, mm, that's what I was out here doing? Like, have you had, have you witnessed any faux pas as now, a director? I haven't like really witnessed like, that's what I'm like, but I've witnessed more of, fuck, that's what directors are dealing with. Uh, because this is the thing that's interesting. So, so you'll have a day. So let's just say Tuesday is a shoot day. Mm -hmm. And on the schedule that day are six scenes. And in those six scenes, you have two set, you have a two handers in all six scenes, all different actors. You know, maybe let's just say it was insecure. Mm -hmm. so six scenes, and maybe Issa may be in three of those six, but it's on all of those six scenes are different actors. You're the only actor that's the same actor Got it. in three of them. So <laughs> actors that come in on the end of the day, they're like, hey, yeah, hop, pop, ready, ready to go. And the crew been there all yes. motherfucking day. <laughs> yes. And as a director, it's your job to manage that energy, you know, and to meet it, squelch it, or whatever that needs to happen. And you got to learn that fast, mm. you know. And um, that's actually fascinating and fun to me. I, it's, it's, there's a lot of psychology that yeah, goes Yeah, I saw that you it. thrive, like, all the drama of, like, uh, the day. No, I of, fall like, asleep oh, at home with my, like, iPad like this. Jesus. <laughs> Wake up, like, okay, oh shit, it's seven, good. Because seven, the directors don't have to be there. Yeah, the actors have to be there in hair and makeup for this six and true. seven. That's so I, I come in and I'll come and say hi to y'all after y'all got your lashes on and everything and be like, hey, <laughs> you ready for the day? <laughs> And sometimes I'm doing that based on the subject matter that we have to do. Got sometimes it. I won't even come and deal with you. Sometimes if it's um, a scene that's very sensitive, I might reach out to you personally. Because Issa understands this. There's some directors that'll come on and she's never met them before. And she'll get an email, Issa, so great to meet you, you know, before they, because, well, no, Issa's a little different because she's the executive producer. So she's doing the tone meeting and all of that stuff. So, um, so somebody's like the star of the show. So, Ke like Carrie Washington on Scandal. Because Issa is Carrie and Shondaland. Right. You guys, y'all understand that? You do realize. You do realize that. No, that's a... No, 
no, no, not a uh uh, no, for real, yes. That shit is all of that in a bag of motherfucking chips. That's my Yes. Yeah, 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 no more. <laughs> so, um, you know, with the carry, you know, there, there, there might say be a, a real, a scene that maybe look, maybe it may be sex related or mm -hmm. something like that to be sensitive. So there's some uh, directors, myself included, depending on what's written, we'll reach out to you before. To you know, I land. Yeah, and, and, and just to, you know, whatever I can do to make it better. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And then there's some directors that it could be like, you don't have, you, you only, for some reason, only got three scenes in this episode. And they're like, whatever you want to do, you know, and they're, t and it makes you as an actor go, wow, ah, oh, <laughs> back up, it's too much. So I say all that to say that as an actor, I, I have the ability, I have the built-in innateness, I'm making up words. That's a word. That to, <laughs> to know when I need to do a special reach out or not. Got it. Because we, as actors, we're doing so much, you know, so we don't need an extra email mm -hmm. unless we need an extra mm -hmm. email. Mm -hmm. And I just think because I'm an actor, it makes me a better director is all I'm saying. Um, so, I mean, you kind of touched on this, and we have a couple minutes, and then we're going to open it up to the audience. But you have, you are constantly reinventing yourself, and you're not afraid to kind of humble yourself and say, I want to learn everything about this particular process, and I want to challenge myself and um, just try this out and see if I love it. And I'm just wondering, given that you know you have a, you have a production company with your sister, yeah, so my sister, yeah, and like what what you're what you're thinking about tackling next? Like, what are those conversations? The first of all, that you have with yourself, right? You know, at home where you're like, mm, this is enough. I want I don't I want to do the next I want to do the next thing. Like, what are you thinking of doing just now? Well, that's twofold yeah, it because is. the the production deal is with ABC. And there are things that ABC is doing that, ah, oh, this is being recorded, okay. So. Turn the, ca turn the cameras off. Uh, um, <laughs> don't turn it off. <laughs> Just choose your word. <laughs> I mean, do turn it. Turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, the, the reality of it now that I have this deal is understanding the business of it. Mm. That's the safe way to say it. Okay. <laughs> and um, the show that I'm developing for myself probably won't be on ABC Network, okay. but it will be an ABC Studio Studios. show. Uh -huh. And um, right now, it's a comedy. And I have to say that Insecure was inspiration. Awkward okay. Black Girl was inspiration okay. behind it. Nothing like Awkward Black Girl or Insecure, but I think that I have the last seven seconds that I just did, three years of American crime, leftovers. I've been doing dark shit for a long ass time. <laughs> and I'm a funny bitch. Yes. So yes. I'm ready to do light for a minute. If I'm gonna be doing it for, if, 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 if the shout out is for me to be doing a show for some years, then I, I need it to be light yeah. and I needed the reminder of, you know, the, the, the Jerry Maguires and the things that I did before, you know, we got to real serious subject matter. And so basically what we're developing now is something that uh, is with John Ridley, who a lot of people don't know was a stand-up comic what? before. John what? Ridley? Not that serious motherfucker. Yes. yes. <laughs> he is a funny dude and he hits you with slingers and you and a lot of times with John, you don't know he hit you with them till they pass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh! So, um, you know, I came up with an idea that John really digs and feels like 
excited to write about, because that's also what it is, finding with writers, mm -hmm. you know, if you guys aren't inspired you by care. us mm -hmm. or something, then you would like, mm -hmm. can't do it, you know? So it took us a minute to find that something that inspired him and that I felt like I could do for six, seven years, right. you know? Um, so we're, we're um, dealing with, you know, coming for some wigs. Ooh. You can't talk about what no, the No, I can't. You know, ABC is hearing for, about it for the first time on Wednesday. Ooh. That is three days from now. <laughs> um, like you're pitching it to them? Yes. Ooh. Yes. We, yeah, because you still, even though, you know, you got the check. Yeah. And you, got the, you still got to pitch. Mm -hmm. you, you know. Um, God. <laughs> You know, uh, but um, to, just to be in this space, you know what I mean? And there's so much content out there that inspires me. Mm -hmm. And well, can you talk about like what what attracts you to a project as a director? Like what you're drawn to? Like you, you said you've been doing a lot of dark shit. So as a director, but you've directed a lot of dark shit no but well. i've directed some Bounce. good like like you know like next week i'll start directing shameless i'm okay. done i'll start an episode of shameless <laughs> and i mean besides that because television as you've mentioned is it, like there's a world that's established already it's, yeah, but it's and it's so much on television but i just feel like there's the storytelling like that they're, they're Sure, there are things that fall between the cracks, but, and, I, and I'm really not saying this, Issa, to just like pump you up or make you feel uncomfortable, mm. but, you know, because I, I witnessed the, what she went through from Awkward Black Girl to Here mm -hmm. and the HBO, Shondaland, and all of those different conversations and things that happen. It is not... You know, you guys, you guys see it and it's on, but all, all what happened before that moment that y'all saw that first episode, it, I'm going to say is incredible. Mm -hmm. that, that's the word that I like to use because incredible encompasses the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And it's incredible what those have to go through to be here, mm -hmm. you know, like for us or for you guys think that this is just an easy opportunity for her, but man, I, I, there's always a story behind everything. The story behind the story behind the motherfucking story. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna get that tatted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Can you, were you going to do it the long way I here or the long way here? I kind of think that's cute Yeah, right like here, here like da, 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 da. Behind the motherfucking story. It'll end up on my wrist. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I love and that. if it gets too long, you just put mofo story, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what draws you? Like, what do you, what do you, what, do you, what excites you when you're like, I'm about to take on this project? And to that, to, to the point about the TV, just that it is like an already established world, are you itching to be like, I just want to do my own shit? Like, I want to yes, do my, it, create my own You know, own like, I, I really, um, from, um, after Southland, Southland was the last show that I did that, that I don't know how many of you guys under, understand this, but when you do a show, when you sign on to do a show, they sign you on to do multiple years. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do that is because if the show gets picked up or is a success, they don't want you to be able to go out to someone else. So after Southland, it locked me up in a lot of places where I wanted to do something, but I couldn't because we were waiting to find out if we were picked up for another season, another mm -hmm. season, and, mm -hmm. they, and that went on for like three years, and I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I've been working way too long and way too hard, and so when American Crime came up, uh, you know, I came on just as a guest star, and then for the second season, you know, we, uh, well, no, then back up. HBO um, 
wanted to hire me to be a series regular on Leftovers. Yes. But it, American Crime hadn't been picked up yet. And I really, I felt like I had a family with American Crime and I loved American Crime. And I was like, I'll do it for one season. You say you do the leftovers for one season? For one season. And they were like, oh, I'm not sure. Like, well, then I'm not going to do it. So I, 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 kind of, I, I bet on myself. I bet on myself. And it was the first time I bet on myself, and it was the most empowering thing, empowering thing ever. When they were like, "Okay," and a we'll bitch was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I can do that." <laughs> okay, word. <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing that. Wow. So ever since this for American Crime, the Netflix thing, I've done that. But ABC saw the value in that, and so I did a deal with them, a pod deal, to develop shows for their um, studio and, and a show for create, myself. And that's you creating the and show. I, and and it was world. me creating that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, all what I'm saying to you is to the answer to your question it's been a lot of learning along the way and watching other people make some mistakes mm -hmm. and watching things and, and, and remembering things that happened within my own career that didn't feel right and had decided I will never, ever, ever do again. And, uh, like? Well, no, like, I will never, ever do a show that and do multiple years mm -hmm. unless I am the producer. The, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, I'm mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm everything. <laughs> you know? Okay. So, you know, you, I, I feel like you can learn from Everything. It's not like you you can only learn from elders. You learn all the time. Absolutely. You know, you watch what other people do and go, shit. Well, that's what I feel yeah. like makes you so so fresh and so fun to watch and just so constantly relevant. And I'm just so happy to to see your success. You're such an inspiration and you know, I love ditto, you. So much. Ditto, you're, ditto, you're the ditto, best. ditto. So at this point, we're gonna open it up to, to audience questions. Yeah. I'm gonna let you decide, you know. Don't nobody ask them, like, was Ice Cube to work with? <laughs> uh, is there any patron be like members next. first before I begin? <laughs> Are you a patron member? Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, we're going. <laughs> Hi, Regina. Hi. I got the opportunity to work with you as a PA on the catch. And oh, wow. <laughs> you were one of the most humble, <laughs> really nice people to come on the show. And it was so nice to see that, especially when we have all these other directors that come through and you're like, I just was watching them all and like, what are they going to be like? What are they going to be like? And you were Which just. Which is always a wonder for right. the entire crew. They're right. Like, yeah. so, but the energy that you brought was just so different. And I just really, it was a pleasure to, to watch Thank you. you. But kind of going back to the ABC thing, I have a quick question. If for, do you have any advice or tips for someone who wants to apply it for the directing program? Um, well, the good news is that you already have worked on ABC, on a show on ABC. And I think that people who have actually worked in the industry have a better chance of getting into the program than those who have just got wind of the program and are just submitting their piece of work, but have no relationship to the industry already. The, um, the, the, the year that, the two years that I was in the program, everyone that finally was of the, there's like, cause every year, it's, sometimes it's 12 people, sometimes it's 14 people that they bring in. But it was, I think, 14 in the, the two years that I was in. And everyone already worked in our industry in another capacity outside of episodic directing. So I would say that you're already on the right path. I would say that when you submit your piece, because some people submit really long things. Like when I did it, like they said there was only a certain, you know, time frame on what you're submitting. And then after I had become um, part of the program, after I had, I don't want to say graduated, but after I had gone past the program, um, 
they ask, would I be a judge as far as, because there's so many people that submit um, to, to, to help narrow it down. So I said, sure. And then I was getting like some movies and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't watch all of the movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I would watch like 20 minutes of it, but Sorry, I, I really don't have the time with all of the other things that I'm doing. So I would say that if you are submitting a piece of your work, I would submit something that's seven minutes or less. Yeah. Just so the person can, because the things that I saw that were seven minutes or less, I got to see a beginning and middle mm -hmm. end, and I was able, when I'm, I'm judging it and writing all of the things that I'm feeling about it, because I, I want someone to honor my stuff the way that I honor theirs. But if someone's submitting an hour and a half movie or two hours, I can't give you that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I would say. So keep it short. Keep it short. All of that to say, keep it short, what she said. Ask Issa questions for Regina. <laughs> uh, next questions? Are we, is Regina selected? No, 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 no. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Unless you want to. No, yeah. Okay. Hey, Regina. Hey. Congrats on your deal. That's Thank nothing you. to make light of. That's a huge, huge deal. Thank you. Second of all, girl, you are so beautiful. I don't even swing that way, but you Wait. just, you just giving it all to me. You just, you just giving it all to me. I had to say that. <laughs> Third of all, <laughs> um, you were just so real and dynamic in all your characters. Like, in Enemy to Stay, when you was like, I picked those drapes. Like, I was just, I feel you in even the small moments. I just feel you in all that. American crime, everything. I said all that to say, has there ever been like a role or a moment in characters you play where you feel like the black experience, you know, I say the black experience, like, you know, the white people to the masses, yeah, white people yeah, being yeah. the masses. Um, there, it was a stereotype in there. And he was like, I feel some kind of way, but I feel like I gotta do it so that it's shown and then I can move on and not get my own shit. Like, you got your own shit now, you got your deal. So right. you can do what you want. But like, was there a moment where you felt like you had to do a role like that or a part, like I said, there was a moment and you felt like with the black experience, you was like, I feel some kind of way about this, but I'm right. gonna do it. Maybe in, in your early roles or right, something right, right, like that. Right, 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 right. Um, no. Because when I think about it, the, those roles that were that, were that was the story, mm. you know? Um, I have always been lucky enough that when I'm reading scripts, it's always been about telling a story. It's always been, that's what's always been, even if they were soft movies or harder movies or action or not, you know, it's always, if I, I needed to believe the story. So that's going to be a no. If, if I don't believe something, I mean, even when I did something as soft as the Gabby Douglas story, and that was... Really like, you know, oh, I won't, if I do this movie, I don't have to dip into my son's college account. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do this movie. <laughs> Everybody loves Gabby Douglas. Right? So. <laughs> but most actors have a job. For me, I felt okay about taking a job for that reason because I felt like overall it was a good thing to do. I didn't feel like I was um, uh, putting my, um, my worth in jeopardy. I didn't feel like I was telling a false story. So those are the two things that have always been the most important questions for me before taking a role? Am I putting my worth in jeopardy and am I telling a false story? Uh, so, yeah, you know, have I done things that, you know, made people mad? Yeah, Boondocks made a lot of motherfuckers mad. But it, it also ignited, a, I mean, the Boondocks is a culture, you know? I mean, I, I go to, into other countries and like they say shit in their language and I'm like, <laughs> this is universal, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, no. Yeah. 
What, what? It's somebody back there waiting. Wait, you choosing somebody? No, no, I just saw her. I, when I'm not choosing, it's the only hand I saw. Yeah. Don't make me choices. So what's Pac like to work with? No, I'm, t- I'm totally kidding. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was so, good though um, I just had a question about networking so I'm kind of like starting from ground zero as far as my career goes I just moved out here in August I'm not from LA unfortunately but um, <laughs> so I just wanted to know like what moves do you think I should make to network with the right people in order for my career to launch that's so tough <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know writing. what to tell yeah. you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and then this is the reason why I say I don't know what to tell you. The, the, I have been in this business for 30 plus years. So I have, you know, I have become part of it. So there's a whole social media aspect of it that I don't even understand that probably somebody else could help you with that I don't even really know how to navigate and I think that that's what you have to navigate now. But I mean, to her point, as someone who is part of the industry, if someone were trying to network with you, what are standout moments where you've been like, oh, they came at it, they came correct, they came the right way and I would want to, I want to mess with them, I'm intrigued. Well, if I'm walking out the door and you're like, hey, and I got a project, no, that's (laughs) not the good time to do it because usually it's, my guy's pushing me out, and it's usually me trying to go home mm-hmm. for, I mean, I'm, Issa can tell you, we spend six hours at home. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's, so w- when we feel like we might have 20 more minutes, mm-hmm. we're trying to get there. So, I don't know, I mean, if you feel that you have some form of content that is perfect for a certain production company or certain um, voice that you've been following, I would say to follow it deeper and position yourself in a place that you're able to approach it without approach it with being able to get a little bit of time. And I, and, and I mean, and I know that sounds really fucked up because it's really hard to find that, but I can't tell you specifically when there have been moments where someone has said something that made me go, oh, whoa. Oh. But usually it's when it's been a moment. It's, it hasn't been when I'm on, my, on the go, because if it's when I'm on the go, I'm going to, yeah, 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 and take your card, and and it went in a stack of nine cards. But if it's um, at a moment where you happen to be next to me at at an event or at a dinner or at a something where there was actually time to talk and you present it, then you might get the opportunity. So I guess maybe the better answer to that question is if you see someone that you feel um, could have the right ear for whatever you represent or whatever project or content you have, if you got two minutes, then you ain't got no time. Seriously, because it's gonna, because before you got there, the, the, their publicist told them something, their agent told them something, they answered an email, they did like about nine different things and now you're like, oh, miss. And it's like, in their mind, our mind, we're trying to be polite and not l- let you walk off being that she was a fucking bitch. Mm. So that's where we are in addition to we're on our way to the next place. So it's really hard for us to process what you're saying. We're just trying to manage the time and hope one of our people shut that shit down real quick because I got to go here. I'm being 100. I'm being really, really honest because that's... On the level that Issa and I are going, the, the time is so... so minimal. The time is so precious that if you really feel like through one of us is the time, 
then you, you've been watching us to insert yourself at the time. Mm -hmm. If that d is not the case, where if it, the case is more that, you know, oh my God, I got this project perfect for Jamie Foxx and he's right there. You better make sure. It's perfect. If you're if, if you about to do that, make sure you feel like you got your end right. Because if not, he ain't never, ever, 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 ever. If you started on that moment where you saw him from across the room and you didn't have it all together, he ain't never going to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know. I think, I think that some people are um, amazing uh, at doing that, amazing at getting people's attention, amazing at... You know, that's what some managers are about. I'm not amazing at that. Mm -hmm. You know, thank God I've worked for 30 years, so I'm amazing at, call them and tell them I want a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but I could do that now, 30 years later, and I know it sounds like, fuck, but it's that throughout all of my <laughs> career, every move, from the time that I left 227 to now, every move has been a calculated step. So, mm. we, we have time. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, time for two more questions. Two more, two more. Hey, Regina, hi, Issa. Hey. Uh, question, what are your views on theater? Um, as for, say, an actress that maybe hasn't found her way, maybe has done some commercial work, um, what is your view on, on the basis of, uh, of theater um, creating a really good platform for an actress as opposed to film? That is so interesting that you asked that question. Uh, I'm born and bred in LA, so that theater thread is not as prominent here really as it would idea. be in New York or Seattle Chicago. or uh, I think Portland has maybe a bit of Chicago, a theater. Portland, Chicago, uh, yeah, Steppenwolf, yeah. So I think it's great if you're in those places. Um, I think in LA, it's great for exercise. I don't know how great it is for exposure, but in um, the, the Seattle, Chicago, New York, there might be some exposure from it. But um, you know, when you're from LA, you know, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really realize the amount of money there was not in theater. Because <laughs> I got an offer to do some theater, and I was like. <laughs> How many weeks? <laughs> Don't know if I'm ready for Broadway yet. And I do want to do Broadway, but right now the thing about it is my 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 engine is going. So, you know, um for on um, my uh, um, for me to um, take time to do Broadway would take time away from so many other things that I have not researched it enough to be able to fully answer that question about the benefit of it. But I will say that unless you're in LA, unless you're doing the taper or uh, the one out in Westwood, what's it called? Geffen. Geffen. Uh, Geffen um, it's, it's not you know, gonna be anything more than exercise. But exercise is good. Exercise is very good. So if you're not doing it on that level, just know that you're doing it to prepare yourself to get to that level. Um, but there, when you have um, casting directors going to look for new talent, they're going to look usually on the taper level or on the Geffen level. They're not usually going to look at Upright Citizens Brigade or whatever. And, and some might. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to swear to that. Like I said, I have not done my research. But I think that theater is a great space for exercise. And the brain, the, the muscle needs to be exercised. So I say yes is good for exercise. You yeah, have another question, but I think I can hear you if you just talk. Um, it's this one right here. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm an aspiring 
You want to give the mic real quick? I'm a writer, aspiring TV uh, content creator, and um, first of all, I'm inspired by the both of you ladies. Um, what I want to ask is, now, because you're in the room, and you're able to look, kind of look around and see um, who are in the room with you, do you see people of color? Do you see a lot more people of color creating shows? Um, because I want to be on that side where I'm writing and I'm creating my own content and building my arsenal for a moment where I, I can have that opportunity, that one opportunity to do it right. So because you're in that space, do you see more and more of us? Uh, no. Is, it, is the door no. opening? Not as many as we like. D Issa is opening the door. You know, the, the, the honestly, 100%, because you have someone like Issa that's wanting to tell an honest story. It is very hard for a lot of uh, writers that become on, that come on staffs, where they're the only black writer. And I've witnessed being a part of a project where that black writer is scared to be like, no, it does not go down that way, because they just really want to get to the next place. So, and it's unfortunate, and I can't get mad at them for it. You know, you wish there were more of us actors and writers um, that are able to say, fuck that, this is the, the real story. Um, I'm always the first person on any project that I've been on to always try to bring and make sure writers and actors understand that we need each other. Like, it is not just writers, it is not just actors. There is a respect level that really has to be there with writers and actors, and I'm always that person that is constantly making sure that exists. It exists not just for your lead actors, it exists across the map. Um, it's your words that we're bringing to life. Um, sometimes, in, in the words, you feel the writer's pen too much, and the writer needs to understand that. And, 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 and allow the actor to be collaborative, to be you know, part of this storytelling because it, it, you have the casting director, the, you have the writer, the casting director, the actor who then again turns around and works with the writer, the director, and then the editor. So these are all the storytellers in any project we have ever watched in our life. These are the storytellers of the project. If you don't respect all those positions, you have a real problem. If you do respect those positions, you have the most beautiful thing you could have ever even considered, which is why we do what we do, because it's so galvanizing. But um, very important for the writers and actors to respect each other and know that we need each other. We do. and, and um, I always try to take time to, you know, talk to my writers. They would call me up, you know, you send your email, yeah, here's mine. <laughs> you know, so I, I think it's uh, the, the best way to put it again is that it's galvanizing what we do. One last, one last question in the back and we're done. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, I grew up watching you. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for pretty brown girls in the industry. Woo! Woo! Yeah, right. Thank you. I was a black girl. I've been, been around. I'm like, look at this. And oh, thank you. So um, my question is, I'm a stand-up comedian and a producer, and I'm at the point in my career where I really want to put a team together, a manager, an agent, just someone to like get me in on the next level from stage to TV film. Aside from your talent and beauty and longevity in the business, how important was your representation throughout your career in helping you get your opportunities to keep them and you saying, hey, can you work harder for me? Hey, these people are going up for this or maybe you didn't have that, but my question is about uh, representation and, and your career in the business. Well, um, very important. Um, luckily, I am with a group. Um, my, my agents and my manager, except for my lit agent as a director, I have been with for 20 years. And it's primarily because they all saw me as an 
actress, not as a black actress. And um, I know that that's um, something that a lot of actors of color would like for their, if not anybody else, their representation to look at them that way. And very early on, I learned that that's how they looked at me because they like, um, for example, the character in, um, did I do Legally Blonde or, uh, or Miss Congeniality? <laughs> oh, I, why don't I did, I did I, I don't know which one I did first. Well, one, 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 whatever one that was first of those two. Both, both of those roles were written for white women. And, um, you know, um, uh, with Miss Congeniality, they change a couple lines to accommodate the whole Tina Turner thing. But, um, both of those roles were, yeah, I actually before those two was this movie I did with Molly Shannon called Year of the Dog. And that was written for a white woman. And it was a real goofy, silly role. And, and my agent, Lori Bartlett, which is a black woman, was like, yeah. So she reached out to um, uh, Mike, um, she, Mike White and said, uh, you know, you should consider Regina for this role. And he was like, what? I never thought of that. <laughs> and he did, and Mike is a real interesting cat, you know. Real interesting cat, funny cat, <laughs> but real interesting. <laughs> and um, so I came in and met with him, and I did this list for the role, and, and just was talking with the list and saying things to him, and he was like, I love it. <laughs> And um, so they believe that I had the talent to be considered as not just a black actress, but an actress for the role. They believe that I could, that, that they could say that, and that I can go in on the audition or the meeting and back up what they said. And so uh, I believe luck is where preparation meets opportunity. So. They gave me the opportunity and I was prepared. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so y'all did, did Regina keep it all the way 100? I got the 100, I got the 100, I got the 100. I got the 100. Thank you so, 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 so much Thank for you. sharing every ounce of you. You're Thank amazing. you for sipping with me. Thank you guys. Thank you all for coming out. Father's Day and Happy Sunday. Yeah, Happy Father's Day for the 10 daddies that came out.